Our speaker tonight graduated from Canterbury in 1987. Uh, she works for Univara Capital Team, and um, Joelle Weiser Pratt is a managing partner. Um, her experience in the securities industry spans over 18 years. Uh, she is um, on the board of Educate Girls Globally, or EGG, a foundation that tackles change at its most fundamental level. Education um, is the fundamental level. And EGG has been working in India since 2005, uh, improving existing government schools for educating girls, and importantly, gaining community participation to enhance their growth and development throughout the developing world. EGG um, currently has ongoing projects in two states in India. Um, there are 40 million girls out of the school worldwide. And EGG is seeking to expand its model with the goal to educate and improve the lives of 4 million children from 2010 to 2015. The co at a cost of just 1.80 or $1.80 per child. Um, and so tonight, uh, she graciously accepted to talk about her foundation, and we're very much looking forward to it. This is her tech assistant. <laughs> It's an honor to be here with you all tonight and fun to be back. I do not know if anyone recognizes this quote from Christophe and Wudun, written in Half the Sky, but I found it so encapsulated my inspiration that I have made it the cover for the charity I co-chair now, as well as the opener for tonight. It reads, in case you can't see it in the back, in the 19th century, the central moral challenge was slavery. In the 20th century, it was the battle against totalitarianism. We believe that in this century, the paramount moral challenge will be the struggle for gender equality around the world. When I was a student here, I always liked anything that started with a video. So these short clips were commissioned by Nike's Girl Effect um, campaign, sum, out just, uh, sum up just about everything I'm going to say tonight, and there's an argument I could end there. But I just love these clips, and I couldn't decide which ones. I'm going with both. Hit it, Louisa.
And now for one more short one. So now you know. So now you know the message I wish to impart this evening. And I could probably end it here. But first a few words about why who I am and why I returned to Canterbury tonight. I was the class of 87, supposed to be the class of 88, but for some very misguided reason I was in a rush to finish school and go out and embrace the world. Fortunately for me and probably Canterbury, um, Canterbury aided and abetted in this goal and allowed me to graduate, graduate ahead of schedule. I cringe at my haste when I reflect upon it now. I can only take this moment to beg my daughter and all of the students here to enjoy these fleeting moments. As my southern grandmother once wisely counseled me, savor the hard candy, Joelle, instead of breaking your teeth on it. <laughs> Unfortunately, I often miss the point. Aside from learning basic boarding school survival skills, I lot of, learned a lot of things at Canterbury. A solid liberal arts preparatory education came in handy for all sorts of pursuits. From masterminding how to hijack a Zamboni to how to fit a cow inside a Volkswagen Golf. <laughs> yes, really. But what did I take away from it all with me? Well, it wasn't the cow nor the Zamboni. There was a culture here, I am sure, that all of you in the audience who are fortunate enough to be part of this community will understand implicitly. Rather than self-entitlement and beyond self-reliance, Canterbury fostered the belief that not only could you have the po positive impact on the world, but that you should have a positive impact on the world. Everyone who passes through Canterbury learns a simple message. Find something you believe in 
and do something about it. That message was clearly instilled in me, and from that seed that was planted before graduating nearly 25 years ago this year, I stand here today to tell you what that something became to me. But first, a few more pieces of history that illuminated the path that led me to my conclusions. When I was a student here, I was entirely oblivious to any gender differentials in my sphere, except for perhaps that the sports games for girls were 